So that's the basic idea of how everything's going to fit in there with the tank sitting on top of the little platform there and then it'll be strapped in one way or another. Uh, I think the only thing I really need to do is start trimming down a little bit off of this uh, vertical triangle piece here in order to allow this to, to snug up in here as much as I can because right now I've got gaps of about you know, half an inch or so and uh, this right down there is what's causing the interference. So just with a little bit of sanding, we should be able to get everything to fit better. in is a tight fit but I think we can probably do it let's give it a shot it has to actually go through here inside the hole back there it barely fits in that corner and then we'll rest right there all right and there's the pipe I can't really see it that way, but it is down there and in position. Okay, folks, what is next is getting this fuel tank platform glued into place in here. I'm just going to set something like that. So what I'm going to do first is come in and do the, well, there's a few things that have to happen, you know, kind of back to back or at the same time. I'm going to put the interior fillet along this edge. I'm going to kind of dress up around this uh, um, this pipe where it joins the wood right here. Uh, and then I am going to put some neat epoxy, meaning with no filler whatsoever, on these patches that's going to be bonding the wood to the hull. I'm going to also put some plain epoxy just on these outer edges, everything that's going to be bonded. And then I will put the thickened epoxy on top of the plain epoxy, set this down into place, and then do, do fillets on all of these contacting edges. So, yeah, it's kind of funny how you have to really think and plan about how you're going to be gluing things together and mixing them up and testing to fit before you put them together and holding them down and marking your positions and I mean there, a lot goes into these epoxy jobs especially when you're dealing with dissimilar materials and you know these very complex 3D shapes but yeah I guess that's enough of uh, bragging about you know my epoxy skills indirectly let's do some epoxy work <music>
Okay, that is the first coat on there, and I guess I should have went ahead and told you what kind of paint we were using, but better late than never, huh? This is a quart of gloss white enamel from Rust-Oleum, and this quart cost about 16 bucks. I expect to be able to do this whole boat uh, with about half a gallon of paint. So uh, yeah, the, into the total paint job for this, uh, excluding the primer, well, actually, let me see. Including the primer, I guess we'll be looking at about 50 bucks for the whole boat. And that'll probably leave me with about half a quart for touch-up. Yeah, so there are all kinds of different paints that you can use on the market out there. Lots of two-part paints from All Grip and Alex Seal and Total Boat. And those would be really nice paints to use. But for a dinghy like this, inevitably, it's going to need touch-up, regardless of how high-end of a paint you go with. So I prefer something like this that's cheap but tough and can be easily touched up along the way without spending too much. So yeah, this paint job... For the paint alone, it's probably 30 bucks. With the primer, it's probably 50 and all. If I were to do Alex Seal or, or just some kind of a two-part paint, that paint job would have been more like two or three hundred dollars. So it's just a substantial difference in cost. And uh, you know, paint's a personal choice. In fact, actually, on our last dinghy, the chameleon uh, dinghy that I built, which is a, a plywood and epoxy over wood design, we actually used latex paint on that, and it held up just fine. Did did perfectly fine. Of course, it needed a little touch-ups here and there, but overwhelmingly, we did just fine with latex paint. And let me tell you, if you want to come up with a way to uh, make, uh, you know, viewers just flip their lid in the comment section, use latex paint on a boat. That's a good way to do it. But, uh, you know, irregardless of all of the, uh, you know, the negative opinions and doom and gloom stuff that we've heard thousands of times over the years, here's a little uh, uh, fact for you. Of all the thousands of times people have told us we were doing wrong or we were going to sink the boat or we were going to kill ourselves or it was the wrong paint or it, the, the examples go on and on and on. Not a single time have any of those people been correct. It's kind of a weird thing, huh? I almost use it as a gauge now. Uh, whenever I hear people uh, telling us all the different ways that we've messed up, I can pretty much rest assured that that particular way is another one added to the list that everything is going to be just fine. forward cleat installed and also the two forward uh, lifting pad eyes are installed. I think I'm going to hold off on the hatch until I get the rest of the locker painted. A lot of this is painted, everything that I could reach here, um, but inside there's still quite a bit that needs to be painted. And uh, I just don't want to get a bunch of paint on the hatch or have it get beat up in the process. So uh, we'll paint it soon and then install the hatch and, uh, and keep right on rolling. There we go, folks. That is the first coat. And uh, I think that it came out very, very good, all things considered. And uh, by all things, I mean my, uh, my lacking equipment, my lacking experience, my lack of technique, and uh, you know, all that stuff. But my goodness gracious, it is shiny and smooth. And uh, for a first coat, my goodness gracious.
Thank you.